building. That was perfect. There you go. Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf at the gorgeous Royal Quebec Golf Club in Quebec City. Look at this place. I'm at the back of the range. Gorgeous grass area here. We're hitting back toward the buildings. Beautiful view. And um, we're going to be talking about, and, and we're going to establish a little drill here. Uh, we talked about static versus dynamic. And a lot of people aren't getting that because, you know, this is what really differentiates us from the rest of the world, really, from, 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 <laughs> from everything. There's actually, a, I found a, a tennis teacher that teaches along the same lines, and he is really barking up the right tree. Uh, I'm going to try to find him and put uh, the link for his tennis on this video. So let's say, you know, we look at static versus dynamic. Static system is simple. A surgeon getting ready to make a, a, a surgery is going to stand like a statue over the table and he's using, the brain is getting ready to use very, come on bug, getting ready to use very specific manipulations, you know, to operate in the patient. When you're sitting down at the table, why are you sitting down? To immobilize your body so that you can perform whatever you need to perform with your utensils. You're going to, you know, go on your phone. Well, you could do some walking on your phone. Yeah, some people can start doing that. But if you really have a, an important message and you want to make sure you type the right keys in there, <laughs> you're going to stop and you're going to make sure you perform those manipulations very well. Now, a lumberjack can't operate that way. You got an ax right here, and we're gonna use the ax to deliver to the side of this tree. I'm gonna use the heft of the ax to deliver my blow. If I don't move, well, I'll get the ax on the side of the head, and that'll be the end of that. So when I heave the ax, I gotta get the heck out of the way. So the brain is gonna, actually gonna use the ground to heave the axe and simultaneously get you out of the way and allow that axe to come up into the backswing because you're never going to heave the axe behind you. Not in a million years, you're going to take out your back leg. You're never going to heave the axe away from you. It's going to swing back and hit your front leg. You're not going to heave the axe straight up because that's, where, that's good for chopping wood or taking bark off the side of the tree, but you're never going to down a tree that way. There's only one place to heave the axe. That's right there. Now you let the brain bring the ax to the side of the tree and the brain's gonna go get the ground, use the ground to get the body out of the way because if I don't, I can't get there. So 12 million bits of information per second is how the brain operates in its automated system. Heave, let it fall into the side of the tree. Heave, let it fall. So now, if I had a T in my hands, or my hands on the ground, there's a T. That's my tree. Well, obviously that T can't stop my swing. So I get my golf set up. I grab my ax. I'm going to heave it up and let it cut the tree. Heave it. Let it cut through. So notice how everything continued through because the brain knew that that T couldn't stop my swing. One arm is 9% of my body weight times two plus a club for a 200 pound person. We're talking about 40 pounds of arms. So the brain automatically assumes that that is not going to stop it. So it, it sees continuity beyond it. So heave it up, let it fall. So I'm using the weight of my arm club unit to cut through that T. Well, I'll put a ball on that. There's a little knot inside of the tree. I take my golf position. Notice I'm hovering at the top of the tee. Heave the ax. Let it cut through the top of the tee. And there's a gorgeous little pitch shot. I can bring the ball to the ground now. I'm going to cut through the stem of that dandelion. <sighs> Pick up my ax, heave it up, cut through the stem of the dandelion. How about that? Side by each, facing the sun. So 
Notice how beautifully I was able to cut through the grass. We are that accurate. If you practice cutting down trees with an ax for a month, I guarantee you in a month, you are Paulette or Paul Bunyan, okay? <laughs> it, it really is that simple. So now, if I'm doing a chip shot, well, here's my tree, and I'm down to the last thread, I don't really heave, the, I don't need to heave up there, it's kind of overkill, so I'm just gonna heave it a little bit and let it fall through the tree. So when I'm using the weight of my arm club unit, mini heave, let it fall. So I'm letting it fall through the dandelion stem, heave, fall. See how pretty that is? So if the ball is off my back foot and I feel like I'm just gonna let it fall through the ball, watch what happens. Watch where my low point is. Fall, 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 heave, fall. So you see how easy that is. The brain, as soon as it feels like you're using the weight of the instrument to perform the task, will glide out of the way of that swing. Have a look at one of my oldies but goodies called arms and body timing. Let the arm fall. Let the arm fall. It still can't go. It's got, still has an obstacle. The upper arm is still going to hit the rib cage. But now if I say let it fall and don't hit my body. See what happens? So I'm letting the weight of my arm fall past me. The brain is a gravity flipping genius. It grabs the ground, uses the body, uses the ground to move the body out of the way, and now you're not hitting yourself. So there it is. Feel the weight of the arm club unit. Notice how I'm feeling how there's a little tug on my shoulder sockets. Little heave, fall through the stem. I want to go further? Well, what do you do if you want to have more of a blow with the axe? Are you going to shove harder? Don't think so. That'd be a greenie. You're just going to heave it further back and use more momentum to deliver to the tree. So all I got to do is heave it back farther and let it fall farther. And there's my 35 to 40 yard pitch shot. See how simple that was? So I'm never using force ever. I don't need to. I got plenty of momentum natural momentum and that's where you're going to get fabulous distance control so i want to toss the ball on the tee there you go toss the ball on the next ball there you go so you know notice that's always there so when you're using the weight of the arm club unit you're always going to be having amazing touch You'll always have beautiful rhythm. Um, the body will always get out of the way. But as soon as the brain feels you're going to manipulate the club to meet the ball, it freezes everything. Now you get to hit yourself twice. Boing, boing. Now everything falls apart. So this thing about hinge and hold, that's because you have to hinge and hold if you're going to chip that way. It's way more difficult. Whereas... When was the last time you played some softball? There you go, right? So, one for you, one for you. Don't let it hit me, don't let it hit me. Out of the way, out of the way. Now you're chipping. So we bring that up the ladder. Well, if I go with a seven iron now, notice I'm a little bit further away. So, I want to cut the tree down in a very specific way. Let me get rid of the shadow for you. Going left edge of this intermediate point right here. Grab my axe. I'm going to do a little fade. Heave the axe. Let it fall through. Hear that? Absolutely flush. If I'm doing draw, line up there, play the ball a bit more back, get behind my tree a little more. Notice where I'm going to heave it now? Heave it. Let it fall to the right. There is my gorgeous draw lining right where it started, right on that line. So now, you're going to hit the driver. 
Well, now it's just a matter of supporting further out here. So I just, I'm going to use the ax to cut higher on the tree. If I'm getting lower, well, I'm going to use the ax to cut lower in the tree. I got to get closer to the tree. So naturally you're going to get further away from the tree if you're using an ax in that manner. So I got to get my setup, say play my fade. So I get my golf measurement. There's my ax. Heave. Woo. That was fun. <laughs> so you see how I have to support that driver a little bit more outside. Let's try that again. So we're doing fade. Here we go. Heave. There we go. Much better. So that felt like I supported it in a way that it would come back a little bit to the left. If I'm going to heave into a nice high draw, then that's going to be a little different. So I'm going to line up on the buildings. Get my golf measurement. I want to catch it a little higher. So now it feels like I'm using the ax hitting up a little bit into the tree. Heave the ax. There's that draw or hook. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? Now notice the contact's pretty gosh darn good. Give me a couple of minutes with this thing and we'll get this humming in no time. Got my position. Excellent. Heave. Much better. Less hook. So we'll go back to a fade and see how that works. There we go. Excellent. So I'm going to narrow that down. So I'm going from hooks to slices. So all that needs to happen, I'm going to play the ball a little bit more back in my stance. And I'm just going to simply sweep alongside the ground here. Here we go. Ha, there it is. So I'm going less up more into the tree for now and that's really giving me a nice accurate shot in the direction I want to go. So see how much fun that was and the as far as the adjustment I just needed to feel uh, the right connection with my tree in order to find my driver. The rest of the stuff was really easy. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next one.